Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway, just doing this quick. <clears throat> All right, so. Hmm. Where do you think I should start, Kenny? Um. Personally, what helped me was the Brutassian video. Because seeing okay. that visually, the uh, singularity stuff, yeah, that helped me put it into perspective. Okay. A little so, easier. <clears throat> so, More than the Terrence video. Okay. Yeah, because that, that puts the three big things together for me, mm -hmm. which are um, that equation and that fractal dualistic, the bi bifactorization pattern, the Mandelbrot set as a whole, <clears throat> and then my graph, which explains the, the structure of that, of that as a whole, which... In, in some sense. <clears throat> so, um, so are you, can you see my spreadsheet? Yes. Hang on, let me, give me one second. Let me turn you up, because you were quiet. My hey. bad, me. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> okay, talk. Anytime anybody says, I'm going to turn you up. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> I can't. Fire. I can't oh, believe you've done this. <clears throat> I mean, it's, 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 hold on. it's, it's honestly like, it's, you can't not do it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you, you can see where, my, where, where I have selected on the spreadsheet through on your spreadsheet. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so. You are you you're familiar with the concept of a singularity, right? Yes. Okay, so a singularity it is infinitely dense, all which means every single point is connected to every single other point, which means it is in essence it's like a cosmic overlap, right? <clears throat> yeah, in essence, in essence, it's like a it's an infinite network of connections. <clears throat> And, um, as you will see, I guess it would be kind of like a less infinite, and, well, I guess it would still be infinite, but I guess like the idea of parallel worlds overlapping on top of each other. Would yes, be a but <clears throat> a singularity is every single parallel world as well. It's, it's the multiverse, it's the omniverse, it's, it's everything. It's just, you, you'll see. <clears throat> I need some water to talk through all this again. It's a big brain moment. <clears throat> okay, so you see here where where it shows the dimensions and mathematical factors, <clears throat> where a dimension is a math mathematical factor. <clears throat> so the null void. They this is this is ex explaining how they how the dimensions work in relation to everything basically <clears throat> in zero dimensions there is nothing it is there is zero order of difference uh the frequency is zero it is a null void so read this It is what cannot exist because it is where existence ceases. It is yin, absolute entropy, where entropy cannot go no farther. It is absolute. <clears throat> and then a singularity. Um, so read that. I have heard of the singularity before. Yes. Where just everything is, yeah, everything's happening simultaneously. Yes, because so... It, it's <clears throat> like the world without time, just everything that exists yeah. in that point. That's what it is. It's a one. It's the one-dimensional object that makes up 
everything. <clears throat> but, um, okay, this is also what people would represent as, or when they come in, con- com- come in contact with this idea or this feeling of unity, everything is one, the singularity, <clears throat> that is what people represent as God. But I don't personally like as much the definition of God because the definition of God is very loose as which makes sense as in this sense God is everything <clears throat> but I yeah but I like the term Ra it's also the name of the Egyptian God uh, the Egyptian God or whatever hmm because I actually have an eye of Ra tattoo yes yes and another thing with the eye of Ra if you take a cross section of our brain, um, the pineal gland is the center of the eye of raw, and you can it kind of it kind of looks like the eye of raw if you take a cross section of it, which is very interesting. <laughs> which makes sense for a society that did mummification that they would have seen the brain. Yeah, definitely. <sighs> um. All right. So. Uh, so yes, there is this dual, dual, duality between absolute nothing and absolute everything. That is yin and yang. That is the first duality, if you could say it like that. <coughs> um, oh yeah, and I, pre- and I prefer the name raw as in raw material because and it, it, when you experience it, it's experience in its most raw form. And it you, everything just feels so raw as it's actually happening. <clears throat> so that's why I like the name Ra. And it's also the name of the Egyptian god. Um, what, what did I explain next? Ken- Kenny? Mm. <clears throat> did you talk about null void yet yeah I, I talked about the null void it is absolute nothing yeah <clears throat> okay you guys you're talking about raw yeah okay, the okay. singularity god all that uh the mandelbra set oh okay yeah that video yeah the mandelbra set yeah um <clears throat> Okay. I mean, actually have that pulled up now. Um, let's let's watch some of this video. Actually, let's watch the whole video because, I mean, you might have seen it before. Have you seen this video before? Uh, I don't recognize it, but I do check out a lot of good video. So it might not have been him that I saw it. Okay, Veritasium is pretty pretty great. What's the connection between a dripping faucet, the Mandelbrot set, a population of rabbits, thermal convection in a fluid? and the firing of neurons in your brain. It's this one simple equation. This video is sponsored by Fast Hosts, who are offering UK viewers the chance to win a trip to South by Southwest if they can answer my question at the end of this video. So stay tuned for that. (coughs) Let's say you want to model a population of rabbits. If you have X rabbits this year, how many rabbits will you have next year? Well, the simplest model I can imagine is where we just multiply by some number, the growth rate R, which could be, say, 2, and this would mean the population would double every year. And the problem with that is it means the number of rabbits would grow exponentially forever. So I can add the term 1 minus x to represent the constraints of the environment. And here I'm imagining the population x is a percentage of the theoretical maximum. So it goes from 0 to 1. And as it approaches that maximum, then this term goes to zero, and that constrains the population. So this is the logistic map. Xn plus one is the population next year, and Xn is the population this year. And if you graph the population next year versus the population this year, you see it is just an inverted parabola. It's the simplest equation you can make that has a negative feedback loop. The bigger the population gets over here, the smaller it'll be the following year. So let's try an example. Let's say we're dealing with a particularly active group of rabbits. So R equals 2.6. And then let's pick a starting population of 
40% of the maximum, so 0.4, and then times 1 minus 0.4, and we get 0.624. Okay, so the population increased in the first year. But what we're really interested in is the long-term behavior of this population. So we can put this population back into the equation. And to speed things up, you can actually type 2.6 times answer times 1 minus answer, get 0.61. So the population dropped a little. Hit it again, 0 0.619, 0 0.613, 0 0.617, 0 0.615, 0 0.616, 0 0.615. And if I keep hitting enter here, you see that the population doesn't really change. It has stabilized, which matches what we see in the wild. Populations often remain the same as long as births and deaths are balanced. Now, I want to make a graph of this iteration. You can see here that it's reached an equilibrium value of 0.615. Now, what would happen if I changed the initial population? I'm just going to move this slider here. And what you see is the first few years change but the equilibrium population remains the same. So we can basically ignore the initial population. So what I'm really interested in is how does this equilibrium population vary depending on R, the growth rate? Well, as you can see, if I lower the growth rate, the equilibrium population decreases. That makes sense. And in fact, if R goes below one, well, then the population drops and eventually goes extinct. So what I want to do is make another graph where on the x-axis I have R, the growth rate, and on the y-axis I'm plotting the equilibrium population, the population you get after many, many, many generations. Okay, for low values of R, we see the populations always go extinct, so the equilibrium value is zero. But once R hits 1, the population stabilizes onto a constant value. And the higher R is, the higher the equilibrium population. So far, so good. But now comes the weird part. Once R passes 3, the graph splits in 2. Why? What's happening? Well, no matter how many times you iterate the equation, it never settles onto a single constant value. Instead, it oscillates back and forth between two values. One year the population is higher, the next year lower, and then the cycle repeats. The cyclic nature of populations is observed in nature too. One year there might be more rabbits, and then fewer the next year, and more again the year after. As R continues to increase, the fork spreads apart, and then each one splits again. Now, instead of oscillating back and forth between two values, populations go through a four-year cycle before repeating. Since the length of the cycle, or period, has doubled, these are known as period-doubling bifurcations. And as R increases further, there are more period-doubling bifurcations. They come faster and faster, leading to cycles of 8, 16, 32, 64, and then at R equals 3.57, chaos. The population never settles down at all. It bounces around as if at random. In fact, this equation provided one of the first methods of generating random numbers on computers. It was a way to get something unpredictable from a deterministic machine. There is no pattern here, no repeating. Of course, if you did know the exact initial conditions, you could calculate the values exactly. So they are considered only pseudo-random numbers. Now you might expect the equation to be chaotic from here on out, but as R increases, order returns. There are these windows of stable periodic behavior amid the chaos. For example, at r equals 3.83, there is a stable cycle with a period of three years. And as r continues to increase, it splits into 6, 12, 24, and so on before returning to chaos. In fact, this one equation contains periods of every length, 37, 51, 1,052, whatever you like if you just have the right value of r. Looking at this bifurcation diagram, you may notice that it looks like a fractal. The large scale features look to be repeated <coughs> on smaller and smaller scales. Okay. <coughs> so at uh, this, are, are you there, Cloud? Just to make sure. Okay.
Hello? Say something? Hello? Hello? Alright, you're, you're a bit quiet. Hello? <clears throat> Alright, so were, were you were following were you following along nicely? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so you know how the uh the angel number thing with uh that happened with um Kenny? <laughs> yeah. Like, wh- where, wh- explain it. I kept saying, yeah, I just kept saying a, com- a combination of numbers everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, you kept seeing the same numbers uh, over and over again in different places and different forms. And when he looked it up, it, it's called an angel number. And the definition of those numbers described exactly what he was going through at that time. <clears throat> and um, people say that time is linear when... To me, it's, it clearly isn't in any way, but it's a, it's just a way of measuring time linearly is how we yeah. see it. We just measure it linearly. <clears throat> so these events, um, T- uh, Terrence McKenna had a really nice theory um, that was actually told, told, told to him in quote, quotation marks buy magic mushrooms on one of his trips <clears throat> where he found that time works in waves so there's this chinese old chinese uh uh thing called the i ching it's a way of describing time and you can look at it the same way as you look at the periodic table of elements describing materialistically things um it's it's as in depth that it's it describes time using 64 uh what they call hexagrams of time um some being called this like one's called a uh break into um one's called uh i don't know i'll have to look that up but that is what makes up these time waves time waves are so, so time happens at many, many different scales. Um, so like some th- sometimes things will be like when, uh, when a lot of things are happening. <clears throat> so if you look back at the graph um, that, I, that I made before, <clears throat> um, inside of novelty, um, and the, sing- the singularity is, a p- is the pull towards novelty, the pull towards connectivity, the pull towards unity in the one thing, a one-dimensional object. <coughs> and, um, oh yeah, I, I drink this double shot uh, energy thing. That's why I'm so, my mouth is so dry and talking is weird. Coffee. Yes. Um, what was I saying? <clears throat> so yeah, uh, Terrence McKenna's time wave zero theory. Um, <clears throat> so time waves, they are defined by, well, they, they are, they are waves of time at many different scales. So one time wave would be the orbit or the, the synchronicity between, um, the alignment of Jupiter and Saturn that we ha- that w- that's still occurring right now, <clears throat> uh, that would be one giant time wave. Um, the election of the president every four years that w- that's a time wave. Um, <clears throat> all the way down to the microscopic uh, o- orbits of an electron around a nucleus time waves. It, it's there's many different scales at many many different frequencies between them. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, I remember seeing them. I, I think it was uh, the Stephen Hawking theoretical uh, time machine one where he was saying about the... Uh, what's it? Um, the train encircling the Earth. 
that if it were to be running towards closest to light speed, oh, yeah. the people on it would be affected at a different rate of time. I think it was a 10-year. Yeah, time is completely rate. relative on every sense of the word. Yeah, the faster you're going, the <clears throat> time affects you. Yes. And, that, and the faster you're going, the faster things are happening, the more events that are happening towards... A novelty. novelty novelty is when events happen from connections from other things happening and it's just why time flies when you're busy yes <clears throat> and there is a very log logical reason for that in this <clears throat> That's, uh, the processing of information when there's when you're less able to focus right on one singular or not one singular thing um like when there's nothing going on, your brain takes in everything around it and perceives uh, them slower. Vsauce actually made a video on that. Ah, uh, yes. That was recent. It was actually a really good video. <clears throat> but let's for this one here. What helped me like? So, what? Let me get to the uh, the actual diagram. Hmm. Portion of this video. Oh okay. Like that and little... sure enough, if you zoom in, you see that it is, in fact, a fractal. Arguably the most famous fractal is the Mandelbrot set. The plot twist here is that the bifurcation diagram is actually part of the Mandelbrot set. How does that work? Well, quick recap on the Mandelbrot set. It is based <coughs> on this iterated equation. So the way it works is you pick a number C, any number in the complex plane, and then start with z equals zero, and then iterate this equation over and over again. If it blows up to infinity, well then the number c is not part of the set. But if this number remains finite after unlimited iterations, well then it is part of the Mandelbrot set. So let's try for example c equals one. So we've got zero squared plus one equals one, and then one squared plus one equals two, two squared plus one equals five, 5 squared plus 1 equals 26. So pretty quickly, you can see that with c equals 1, this equation is going to blow up. So the number 1 is not part of the Mandelbrot set. What if we try c equals negative 1? Well, then we've got 0 squared minus 1 equals negative 1. Negative 1 squared minus 1 equals 0. And so we're back to 0 squared minus 1 equals negative 1. So we see that this function is going to keep oscillating back and forth between negative 1 and 0. And so it'll remain finite, and so c equals negative 1 is part of the Mandelbrot set. Now normally when you see pictures of the Mandelbrot set, it just shows you the boundary between the numbers that cause this iterated equation to remain finite and those that cause it to blow up. But it doesn't really show you how these numbers stay finite. So what we've done here is actually iterated that equation thousands of times and then plotted on the z-axis the value that that iteration actually takes. So if we look from the side, what you'll actually see is the bifurcation diagram. Okay. <clears throat> so what you are looking at right now is what I see. Hold on, let me turn off my computer. <clears throat> All right, what you're looking at now is what I see as the metaphysical structure of the relationship between the singularity, which is the orange. Everywhere there is orange, there it is part of the singularity. It is the metaphysical, mathematical um, projection of the singularity, <coughs> even though the singularity is one point. And... <coughs> I need some more water. I guess technically speaking, if the singularity is a single point, it's occupying every single point as well. Yes, very true. See, you get it. <coughs> and... I, um... <laughs> what? Uh, what was... Um, oh yeah, and the black and the black is the null void, 
Um, so if we go to the Mandelbrot set right here, um, I, I can start to explain things that make a bit more sense. So as you can see, <clears throat> this is the Mandelbrot set. This outer orange here is um, the, null, the null void as explained in uh, this. Th that's this. That's the, I mean, I the guess zero. In theory, this, the null void would just be whatever is not occupied by singularity, right? Yes. Well, kind of. Because that's where yeah, these, the these things come in. Every single point of everything where a null void represents the lack thereof. Y yes. So we get into a mixture. So um, there's the zero, zero point right here. One, two. If it's, if it's part of the Mandelbrot set, it is part of the singularity. It is part of the all. <clears throat> but these things out here, these, these different colors, uh, shades of orange and blue, these are the time waves uh, pr um, proposed by Terence McKenna. Um, this one is a perfect circle on the outside because it, because it is the one wave of the entire lifespan of the whole universe. It is that, that wave. <clears throat> but if you see this, if you see this point here as the Big Bang, as where things started expanding, um, this way, if we measure time linear, linear, linearly, but it also expanded in every other possible direction of time, because time is its own dimension in itself. <clears throat> um, uh, that would mean that if this is the beginning of the universe, the very point at the very end is the, the very now, that is right now. But um, it, it's a fractal. It is a mathematical function. It, if I zoom in, I can zoom in forever and it will never end. So let's just pick a random point. So if we look here, um, you see these different time waves here and there are these synchronicity events where they all sync together into a single point. And what we get there is if we zoom in is we get a whole nother singularity. And that is what is going on right now. Um, actually, you, there's one more video you need to uh, see part of to make sense of. Um, oh, right here. So try to follow along. And if you can't at any point, just let me know and I will try to explain. This one, this one was a little confusing for me. Yeah, this one, this yeah. one is a bit more confusing and harder to understand. But it's, it's but it's very important. It's very trippy too. It's a lot of colorful. Oh yeah. <laughs> Just fair warning. But it's it's great. It's also very old. It was made in 1980s, I think. It, it gets old. It, yeah. Yeah. We can't the even 80s. conceive. Okay, <laughs> so so you're gonna be seeing uh, you're gonna be seeing this uh, graph a lot in this video. Um, so when you ever, whenever you see the graph, this bottom the 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 x-axis here um, that is the measure through linear time, uh, the measure through history all the way up to now, and here is entropy um the measure of entropy of and the gradient all the way down here which is novelty <clears throat> and w when um holy shit i'm blowing my own mind right now i just realized i'm what okay so uh on my graph uh entropy absolute entropy is the null void where nothing is occurring, there are no there is no time events happening. There's nothing, there's nothing to happen because there's nothing there. Um, and entropy would be it's not a bad thing in our sense because entropy in our sense is is calmness is where things are peaceful where 
um, where you want to relax, where things are just nice and calm. And then absolute novelty, which is a singularity, um, uh, it's, it hits a singularity once it goes down, um, what am I, what am I looking for? Oh yeah, it reaches a singularity once it, once it goes down this, uh, this is zero axis, the zero on the novelty, on the, on the novelty scale. So that would be singularity. And this would be entropy, the measure of entropy relation to singularity, so, or t novelty. Uh, so, uh, absolute, absolute novelty, absolute entropy, basically. But it's a gradient, so there's always a spectrum between. <clears throat> Make sense there? So if we were talking about it as, like, perceived time, uh, so I... I entropy would be considered a slow perception? Yeah, so entropy would be where less events are happening in the same amount of measured time. Time feels slower. Where yeah. singularity would be more time feels faster and then... Uh, yeah, where a lot of things are happening all at once. Yeah. And you then, notice like 2020 who, who all here thinks 2020 like flew by? It, it really did. But like I don't. I thought is we were like five months in and it's already over. Well, so many global events happening, keeping our yeah, real. yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, and so yeah, yeah that's uh, no, novelty would be the just baseline. So yeah, novelty would be the measure of complexity and intricacy and, and connectivity. Okay. Yes. I'm just trying to put the, like, I, I know the concepts, I just didn't know them by, I couldn't remember which name goes with which concept. Yeah. Basically, yeah, makes sense. bottom, well, the way I, the way bottom, I did this to uh, understand it, the bottom of the graph no, is singularity, the top of the graph is closer to, to null void, basically. Yes. Alright. This is, it's stranger than we can suppose, and so... The whole, the cultural fury that characterizes the 20th century, the uh, uh, tremendous upheaval and obliterating of traditional culture, the tremendous movement of information electronically around the globe, the revolutions in physics and archaeology and linguistics, all of these things are acting to complexify our world uh, to the point where it, it finally, I think, must be dawning on everyone that we are moving into a completely different kind of ontos of the relationship between man and nature. When one examines the I Ching, the King Wen sequence, what is immediately apparent after only a few minutes of inspection. So the I Ching, <clears throat> I explained that to you already, right? Yeah, that was the, uh, the whatever. Yeah, the periodic table of time. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I forget what those things were called. The uh, hexagrams. So hexagrams. if you look in the background here, actually, the the. These are the hexagrams. It's a Chinese thing. So this, there's one for modesty, enthusiasm, following, work on, whatever. But yeah, uh, there's a whole graph on it, of it on there. A few minutes of feeling and your perception on time. Yes, the current, the the type of time event that has occurred. Action is that it is not simply 64 hexagrams in some random association, but rather that the hexagrams occur in pairs. The second term of each pair is the inversion of the previous hexagram. And there are eight cases where the natural structure of the hexagram makes its inversion ineffective in changing any of the lines. In other words, there are eight cases where inverting a hexagram affects no change. 
the pairs of hexagrams that are then placed into opposing positions vis-a-vis -vis each other add to 64. So what I believe is happening here is we are uncovering a, uh, the secrets of a pre-Han occult school of numerological speculation. Now an obvious question would be, why should the study of a 4,000-year-old Chinese divinatory system yield an insight into the structure of felt experience in the here and now? The reason, I believe, is that this pre Joe Chinese uh, psychology that was being practiced was, in fact, immensely sophisticated even by modern standards and that using uh, techniques which would anticipate the later development of yoga in India, perhaps using psychotropic substances, these early Chinese <coughs> Taoist shamans were penetrating to the very organizational foundation of matter itself. What this is is essentially an energy structure drawn out of a mathematical analysis of, uh, of the King Wen sequence. Here is the fractal pattern that is typical of the entire wave. Uh, it happens to show up at, the, at certain levels. And the notion is that throughout the wave, when it is moving downward, novelty Sorry, the novelty <laughs> of connection is increasing. So the general conclusion from these screens is that novelty is being increased and conserved as we move through time. Now, for instance, in this screen, which is further closure with today, we see uh, 562 million years, virtually the entire career of higher life forms on the planet. 8,500 years on the screen, the great proto-Egyptian civilizations, Sumer, Ur, Chaldea, are strung out like pearls along this plunge. Egypt culminates that ancient hierarchical uh, form of dominator society. Mycenaean pirates plunder Minoan Crete. At this point, at this point, uh, here we have the Periclean Age in Athens. Here we have the Augustinian Age in Rome. Down here we have the Roman collapse, and then the oscillating around a mean in a high novelty domain that has characterized time since the fall of the Roman Empire. The Dark Ages is here. Uh, the 10th century Islam is here. Uh, the Black Death the discovery of America, the European Enlightenment, World War II. Adolf Hitler becomes Chancellor of Germany. The atom bomb is dropped on Hiroshima. The summer of love is up here. Then the Reagan era stretches down through here. And the moment that we're currently living through is right down in here. This is a span of time from 1991 to 1997. So upon the basis of this screen, we can make uh, a, a series of predictions of a sort about what will go on uh, in the 1990s. And what it's showing us is that uh, there is a punctated, slightly recidivist movement coming across here through 92 an American election late in 92, then this span of time here, in contrast to the domains around it, looks like a fairly conservative period, which ends spectacularly in uh, May of 96 or so, when something happens which propels the entire wave into a deeper level of novelty than it has ever displayed before. What I'm going to show you here is the final terminus of the wave in 2012. Now okay. <clears throat> Did you hear that? Mm. The final terminus of the wave in 2012? 
Yes. So that yeah. is when uh, this that is when this line goes below zero. That is where another that is where a singularity is formed to create uh, new domains to ca to carry all the information that uh, we are preserving and novelty is preserving through time. And that's that's also why people in 2012 thought, oh, the, the year was the world was going to end in 2012 or whatever. But no, a new world was created. And you know what was created in 2012? It was released in 2013, but created in 2012. I'm, I'm fuzzy as to what the year 2012. Okay, it was it was the first Oculus. It was virtual re virtual reality. Where we've we've created a whole new literal universe in itself for us to explore and create in. That is represented perfectly by... Actually, let's use this one. So if we zoom in to here, to the very tip, we are always at the very tip of this because that's the only current now moment in time, so we can't go in forever. But um, once all these waves, uh, like a lot of them being uh, developments in technology like waves of screen technology, um, the understanding of the mind and the eyes for the lenses and stuff, when all those discoveries and stuff converged into one point creating virtual reality, it created a whole new literal universe, uh, a singularity and um, a null void for it to fractalize and complexify itself. And that's what I guess as, as something is discovered, then something new that's discovered, it opens up a whole new realm of possibilities. Of when when so many things convert, when novelty converges to its maximum point, it creates a new domain for it to uh, conceal even more novelty, a new dimension, a new universe in itself. That's what this is. It's a it's a singularity within a singularity. Okay. And at, as you see, uh, yeah, every single one of these is one time wave of many. Again, one of them being the orbit of the Earth around the sun, uh, each day cycle, um, when Jupiter and Saturn align, whatever. But they could also be, they could be anything at all. And then everything just converges on into a point to create a new domain. And that's what Terence McKenna was talking about. He, uh, I guess it could be comparable to how, like, they theorized that the Big Bang, because the universe recedes back in on itself, creates another Big Bang. Yeah, the Big Bang is not a bang. It's just an expansion into a new domain that it's self-created. Because it's always self-creating itself permanently, there is infinite of itself within itself. It reminds me of the, the the time travel episode of Futurama. Uh, I haven't seen it. The final star dying. Oh yes. And from that, or I guess it would be technically it wouldn't be the well it would be the final star dying, but it would also be just the convergence of like the universe in on itself and then re-expanding but remember everything converges into everything be, uh, becomes or gets sucked into black holes uh eventually and what's in the center of a black hole a singularity yeah. which is also why fun fact why uh they uh, it's it has been confirmed yeah the the whole uh time dilation around black holes hmm that uh time around a black hole is altered oh yeah definitely like 
Yeah, I couldn't remember if, they, if that was still in theory. No, I'm pretty that sure that's. I'm yeah. pretty sure that's fact now. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, um, time is just. Oh, also, with the Mandelbrot set. Um, so the outer orange is the null void. I don't know if I can zoom out all the way again. Yeah, the very outer orange is the null void. This is the totality of the singularity itself. The events are, if I change the patterns or the colors, the events fractalize into new universes immediate, immediately from it. Uh, I like how uh, multiverse theory and that every action spawns its own. Yeah, it's all at world. once because the yeah. bigger the action, the bigger the divergence. Yes. Or the farther back. And if you, there's these things called time loops, which I've experienced quite a few of, and it seems to me like a lot of that can be explained by the math of this. Just getting sucked into itself over and over of me doing this. If I say in onto a single point, that is. But th these are the patterns and structures you see on LSD and DMT and all that. Um, oh yeah, there's more to this video displayed before what i'm going to show you here is the final terminus of the wave in 2012 now remember this is the same wave we've been looking at in all our discussion before but finally the wave not only descends deep into novelty it descends into the maximum possible depth of novelty which is uh, signified by the horizontal scale of the graph in other words, and then it ceases. The wave is damped. If you think of the wave as an oscillation, well then this is its fixed point, and presumably its other fixed point is the birth of the universe. Yeah. It's like a navigational device for a time machine that has yet to be built. When time machines are built, they will have to have something like this set in the dashboard uh, to navigate through time because time has many scales and many densities so I'm confident that what we're doing here creating models for new technologies that allow the human mind if not eventually the human body to uh, explore higher dimensional space not as an abstraction but as the fabric of their own lives and the life of the culture and cultures in which we are all embedded. So in theory, wouldn't like a point closer to a null void be in uh, time be easier to penetrate? Yes, that is what our imagination does. Our imagination peers to the edges of that of this fractal that that you that you yourself as a node of singularity of as a node of consciousness itself um gets gets to choose how you navigate it but you also have to learn how to navigate it yeah. navigating the fractal of life basically and i guess in his theoretical time machine in the future thing that we we wouldn't necessarily or we would probably have a much harder time going to bigger points in the perceived singularity yeah so um the time machine is just cr is is going to be created by all the information that we've gathered about events through time that's the that's the best we can do the time machine is going to be within virtual reality mm. theoretically yeah but we don't know that. And this one's really... This this next one's important. Oh. Resonances of the time wave. 
where you, where it describes the frequency different frequencies of it now one thing we haven't talked about that's probably worth talking about is somebody pointed out that the pattern recurs that lays the basis for a theory of resonance so that for instance here i'll stop this so we can talk about it if you have a perfect memory you may recall that many screens ago we looked at a pattern like this and i said chatal Hyuk was here and uh, Ur, Chaldea, Sumer, and Egypt were ranged along here. Well, this is the lower resonance of that. The idea being, then, that historical periods are in fact shaped by the historical period that they are in resonance with by this theory. So, for example, remember how I said um, the pyramids were built right down here, or the Great Pyramid at Giza? Well, if we look on this uh, resonance, what we discover right down there is the rise of Nazi Germany. Now, saying that Nazi Germany is a resonance of Pharaonic Egypt may at first seem counterintuitive until you start thinking about it, and then here's what you come up against. Egypt invented the idea of the god-king leader. The word pharaoh and the word fuhrer are thought by some people to have a common etymological root. Uh, the Egyptians also were the first people to really commit themselves to state-supported massive projects in the domain of tasteless architecture. <laughs> this was something the Nazis were hugely into. And both used slave labor to build their massive and tasteless architectural constructions, and amazingly <laughs> enough, both leaned heavily on the Jews for this labor. And yet, separated yeah. by thousands of years, operating in different parts of the earth, but curiously connected by this wave generated out of the Ching. I find this kind of thing very, Which, very... this specific. graph, um, it reminds me of what Vertassian was talking about. It's like the same thing. It's a repeating yeah. pattern. It is the same uh, thing. It's just represents. Thing. It's the same exact thing, just represented differently. differently that's what because that's it, what the different nodes and the different, um, all the different singularities. Because each point of consciousness is its own uh, singularity, and each one it, it sees the sees things differently because it, as a totality, sees everything as everything. So that's where the complexifying kind of comes from. It's very reminiscent on the uh, those who don't study history are doomed to repeat it because if you can't see the pattern forming, yeah. there's no way to fight against it. Exactly. But and if a few fighting... people notice the pattern, it's not quite enough to quantify a big enough change. The thing is, the noticing of the pattern like this is also part of the pattern. Because as you noticed, all these syn the synchronicities of the end of 2020, the uh, Jup Jupiter and Saturn aligned. Uh, we got a new president. Um, a lot of other things happened. This the Capitol building was stormed. Um, what other things have happened? More COVID. Oh yeah, the 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 vaccine for COVID. Vaccine. Um, all these really great collaborative, collaborative, uh, novel things that have been created, um, uh, because of everything that has happened in 2020, um, it, it was a <clears throat> huge synchronicity, like, right on the end, and I was, and I was tripping as, um, 2020 turned to 2021, and I went outside, and has everybody lit the lit their fireworks off all at the same time like the, these time synchronicities whether they're created by us or not they are there 
and you can feel them. And they can be overwhelming sometimes if you're really sensitive to them. And uh, it's just now I understand all this. And I don't think anyone else understands it in the same way that I do. At least as far as I know. Uh, as there's nothing about this online making these connections besides Veritasium's video. And, and Terrence McKenna's stuff. And s maybe some others. But I'm the one who put it all together. Into one event. Into one idea. Like my spreadsheet. <laughs> Uh, yeah. As an example, the day Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait, I rushed to the computer to check the resonance. Resonance? Birth of Mohammed. Same, same. Couldn't differentiate. So clearly, and so what happened in both cases is that people in a certain part of the world made an enormous surge forward into um, self-expression, if you want. And the whole Gulf War crisis paralleled the life of Muhammad. And when Muhammad died, the war was over. It was born at the resonance of his birth, and it was completed at the resonance of his death. I find this kind of thing very suggestive and, and quite uncanny. We are living through, in a 67-year period that stretches from 1945 to 2012, a compressed version of a larger historical epoch, 4,306 years long, that also ends in 2012. So that we have reached, by this reckoning, uh, the late 700s right now. This is what we are living through. And ahead of us lies... Oh, pause it for a sec? Yeah. Oh. I, I don't know if that was just a one-off, but as he says compressing, is that his way of saying that... Uh, I guess that would be kind of like exponential growth in a way, in that the events uh, will happen faster and faster? Yeah. Yeah, so as things happen faster and faster... Or as we get closer to entropy, things will start to repeat, but in a faster set. Or uh, closer to novelty. Oh, yeah, sorry, wrong. Yeah, <laughs> wrong for, the, the graph is, like, flipped, so more novelty <laughs> is zero, is, is, or one at the bottom. Okay. So, yeah, as we get closer to the bottom of the graph, I'm just going to say top and bottom. I keep for mixing up my words. Yeah. Uh, as we get closer to the bottom of the graph, the speed in which we move from, I, I guess, the repeating the pattern of left to right gets tighter and tighter. Yeah, the, the closer the closer you, we get to the bottom of the graph, the more and more events are compressed into the same amount of linear time, how, how we measure it. But the more events that occur, it's uh, like the more or less time it is created. It's really, yeah. yeah. Hmm, that is an interesting thing. Uh, uh, after guess, school, uh, global how communication would also have helped with that. What is it? Because now it's more. I guess global communication would have helped. Oh yeah. Speed that up and bit. once we make our transition from, I don't, I don't know when it's going to be, but uh, when uh, humans make the transition to computers, would yeah, also be another surge. Yes. So. That would that would be a big one, yeah. Um, once, because all the, everything came together to create virtual reality, but now the next wave is c c everything coming together to create full dive virtual reality. Mm -hmm. um, oh, what was I going to say? I forget what I was probably, say. That would probably lead us more. That, I would imagine that would definitely uh, push us towards singularity because at that point, yeah. when we can communicate through direct feeling and emo like everything in the body, we almost move towards not hive mind, but kind of 
Oh yeah. Uh, so if you, you look at my you graph, a lot of like we are one being. Yeah. Look. Look at this. Because so, once you're all connected. Uh, my I put its entity right here. Are you looking on my graph? Uh, yes. Okay. So this is these are the entities. So the null void, the singularity, God, Ra, whatever you want to call it, the universe as a whole. The universe is is two dimensional. It's a uh, it's a fabric, as explained in science. It's um. Uh, it's the universe reflecting upon itself to, if that, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? It, it reflects upon itself to create a new dimension of itself. Okay. So it creates two dimensions, which is the fabric of space-time. Um, and, uh, what was I going to say? Ah, goddammit. Um, yeah? I was gonna say something to think about too, Cloud, is you yourself, like, every person is a singularity. Yes. Part of the grand scheme of things. So what happens when you take one singularity, one person, one node of consciousness, and, and, and another one, another node of consciousness, think of it like two black holes, but... Um, they create, but through time at least. Think of time as a spatial dimension now. I mean, not literally, so but... In each other, they would form into a, a new... Yes, but similarity. they are still themselves individually as they are both one now. So, yeah. through time... Well, they're not the same as they were, but they are a new... Yes. Combined so, singularity. Yes. So... With the dimensions that um, Earth has created, like the third spatial dimension, and then uh, the fourth that Earth itself and evolution itself inhabits, um, it's able to look at itself in many, many new ways. Uh, so um, if you take the universe and uh, split it into three, um, like three of itself looking at itself, three singularities, three one dimensions, three dimensional. Uh, it's a three dimensional realm, whether it's time or spatial, it doesn't matter, it's three dimensions. Um, and if you look here where I have spirit realm um, categorized on here, uh, the spirit realm, where fractal web patterns and connection networks are made out of are made out of the duality of entropy and novelty, the duality of it being the universe or the two-dimensional fabric. And they gain a self-function just by their own creation. Uh, a 3D realm with time still as just a concept or as part of the three dimensions. And the spirit realm is also synonymous or the same thing with the imagination. It's just connections and fractal web networks of your mind um, creating things that have meaning and have and things that have value within your imagination and um, through through a much slower time wave we can cr we can turn those things in our imagination into this physical realm um, by analyzing it breaking it down and rebuilding it here Okay, I can see that. And, um, but yeah, the when people say ancestors, the ancestors that we contain within us are simply the are simply our genes. It's it's I feel it's that simple. Um, the patterns yeah, the patterns okay. that they have passed They're down awesome. through the collective knowledge of all of evolution through it what it's learned throughout all of it has co coincided into us. We are the only part of it that it that exists. We are all the ancestors. Yeah. We are an accumulation of every yes. past iteration. Yes. And then... Yeah, get woke, Cloud. So, <laughs> these patterns... Um, 
they 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 make things happen in more intricate ways things crashing into each other circling around each other those are patterns um that is what formed the sun the sun gravity for, pulled everything into one thing um not fully a singularity but it was all together but it may later become a singularity if it's too massive as a black hole but then everything else around it all the patterns all the intricate um fractalizations of this existence um forms all these uh different minerals these rocks around the sun they coalesce together into one again uh into a planet and then all then the planets or the moons or whatever in case it happens on things complexify even more and things start self-replicating itself and then once things start self-replicating itself on a planet instead of uh, like the self-replicating stars that explode and then reconform each other and make more of themselves um little particles come together to create machine microscopic machines and stuff to create simple single-celled life and those complexify more and more and more and more you get the idea we you get us and eventually there's going to be another breaking point which uh um, apparently or the not the 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 singularity started showing itself at 2012 is what i think i think the graph could have been um stretched a bit for it to uh, fit more but i think the uh, what terence was talking about with 2012 was that this transcendental object the singularity that we're heading towards um is going to show itself and it surely did with the invention of virtual reality into this whole new dimension that we can explore, this whole new universe that we can, we are the masters Even of. Way towards a shared consciousness, basically. Yeah. Let's be honest. Yeah, definitely. And then we get Earth, uh, the biosphere, where all of life is created. Then we get humanity. Uh, humanity is its own entity, it's its own organism as a whole. The entirety of the biosphere is its organism as a whole. The Earth is an organism as a whole. The Earth is uh, what the uh, people would call Gaia, uh, the, the god of Earth, Gaia, Mother Earth. Um, and then the default mode network, that is our egos. That is where we start gaining our own s sense of individuality from everything else when in reality there it there is no separation at all but we create a separation so now we gotta form everything into one again by creating uh another i mean the, the, this null void is just an example this doesn't really need to be there it's a cpu or a processor that is not turned on so it's it's a empty void of non-flowing transistors and then the singularity would be the operating kernel of the computer, um, the universe, which would be the software simulation, AI training algorithm, um, slash virtual reality. And then the spirit realm, which would be the AI neural networks themselves, the patterns that create everything, um, slash brain computer interface and then our environments the virtual worlds we create like in vr chat you, um like just everything just the environment itself and then now this is that is where we are currently at and the next thing is to create a virtual ai or an entire biosphere and then the, the it, that'll create its own in advanced intelligence that we'll be able to observe and then they might uh, farm, they'll, they'll form their own default mode network or sense of individuality, and then it's just a fractal, it repeats. So yeah, that's that. Okay. Any inputs or thoughts? Well, I think I'm keeping up pretty good. All right, all right. Also, these, uh, the, the, the different substances, I didn't get into much of that. 
So there was a lot that happened that year. Hmm. There's a lot more than just virtual reality that happened that year. Oh, I bet there's a lot of things. But as an but a main example or one of the main examples, whatever they are, being virtual reality and because we've we've created this network throughout our entire society, the internet, and it works in fundamentally the same way as the networks in our brains. What fascinated me is that there was a uh, Egyptian protesters. Because remember that was going on in Egypt, the protests. Ah, yeah. Wow. There's also like a shipwreck, uh, new president and Egypt as well. Hmm. I don't know. That Basically what, why I kind of like am behind this is just because this is obviously a, a pattern that we can replicate. Yes, it's something that has can be to it. It's something that can very be very interesting. Uh, um I guess the only proven. thing that wouldn't be foreseeable would be where exactly necessary. yeah the details are up to us but exactly like what it happens we don't know but depending know. on literally literally the only thing that determines what happens is what we perceive happens yeah whatever draws the yes the, the collective drugs mind <laughs> yes well, i guess that draft would be I guess it would be different for person to person, but it's more judged as a, a global perception. <clears throat> yes. Because, like, the average person might not perceive things in the same granditude of yeah. everybody so else. If you read, so, if you read my... Did you read my quote here? Uh, At the very bottom of the top part. Okay, yeah. You read that? Uh, is that the forever on the brink of death but never dying? No, um... Oh, what am I looking the, the... The quote, the very bottom paragraph of, of the top part of the entire sheet. Oh, yeah, you seek to understand anything, yet, yeah. Yeah. Basically that, because every single, po every single node of understanding itself is a understanding of it either way it it's an understanding that somehow works for that person so if you don't take that into account you won't be able to see the true biggest picture of what can be seen which is what i feel at least i feel like i have seen yeah the more collective input you have the bigger yes your broadening understanding and i guess too you wouldn't want to do it in an echo chamber because they would all perceive things relatively similarly and yes you'd want to try and get like a almost ideally you'd want at least feasible in the moment at this moment you'd want like a collective from multiple different regions Yes. Like, once we get to Neuralink and we can actually link up, you'd be able to see, like, the truest form. And and I think... I don't think we will... I don't know. Because what would that happen... Would, wait, would what would happen if we are able to read the time... all these time waves... And, a, and somehow, if it's even possible, know what's going to happen and then prevent it. What what would have we done? In theory, to view it, you'd have to link up literally every single... Yeah, you have to... Every, every single... single oh, yeah, that is true. So and you'd only be able to do it... We'd all be connected together, so it means we would be able to alter it, because now it's... So... Yes, because we'll only we're only able to do that in a universe that we create. So that's that's what virtual reality is for. If I remember okay, what we were talking in about, theory we would not be able. We'd only ever able to look at the truest past. Wait, what? Necessarily the future, because once we're fully connected to every body, we are in our own way able to form that but i guess then you would 
it would um, we'd be only viewing ourselves. Then we would create. So, hold on. Let me. I'm following along. Get this. So, in theory, if we were to connect everybody, we would be able to see our past iteration, and then, from what I'm gathering, we'd create the new singularity, which would spawn its own universe in which we are a piece of that universe as opposed yeah. to the singularity. So and... then, from an outside force, let's say, in theory, this would connect us with every. I don't know, let, like, let's say this would now create the graph for every living thing out there in the whole universe where we're now a point to go from. No, I lost you on the last few couple parts. So, like, once we hit singularity, we're no longer just viewing ourselves as part of the equation, right? Hmm. Because we're creating the new universe where there are now new variables. Yes. Yes. Which well, which is I, why... I just used the rest of the universe as like a placeholder because I don't know what it will be. I think that's why I've always been... I, or why a lot of people would be uh, gravitated towards VR chat. Mm-hmm. At least that, at that point. That would be interesting, though, because if we did make a singularity of our minds in... It's here. The singularity of our minds is... The singularity of our minds is here. We can... Like, okay. Um, You have to remember you are yourself a singularity. Yes. I I, I would say... I guess the singularity of all of our singularities, then. Yes, the Your choices, all of that stuff, are all points in time that might create new singularities it all goes back to the uh diagram yeah yes all right i guess i would say the the final point for us i guess where we are that whole like science fiction thing of like we are one kind of singularity yeah oh i see you're going out yeah that that interesting but where will we get to a point where we are all connected together oh yes okay whole... yes so um the the creation of the internet was the start of that the internet yeah, connect we'll connected finally yeah we can with other people in other real time we can exchange information to a degree. from all around the world and information is the only thing that reality is made up in the first place as far as we can tell it's just information Mm -hmm. and we can send that we can compress it and send it through paths all around the world and that creates a network that 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 creates the physical network for it to operate and then with ai neuralink once the synchronicity between ai virtual reality neuralink and 3d printing happen that would be the the uh the next big breakthrough the next big descent into another singularity of novelty i'm thinking that once we hit the this is like quite a few i guess it would be considered singularities away or or waves or time waves away or whatever yeah that at one point we'd kind of like I guess not max out but kind of like hit where we can with where we are here and we'd have to start searching out other like i'm i'm the one theory i think of is the the whole like because of the or not theory but the um what's that one equation there about uh um oh, they they spoofed it in an episode of uh big bang theory where they they modified it for a how the gold, many golden ratio livable uh, the whole, like, uh, livable planets that sustain life. The oh, uh, the, um... What was it called? I know, I know the equation now. I know what you're talking they, about. They modified it as a stupid joke about, like, how many eligible girls that would date us kind of thing. <laughs> but, um, I, I guess with that in mind, there would have to be other civilizations and other worlds that are also going through the same thing, and once yeah. they hit the unified mind... 
our next biggest step would be finding ways to connect with that, right? And that's what would push us forward into the new starting point. Yeah, that, that, that's that's a. We're going very far ahead with this. Yeah, that's a very because every possibility that you can that you can say is true in this sense because it's an infinite fractal of infinite different event, events in infinite different different ways. The only reason I thought of that was because I was like, okay, once we're mind singularity, what would be the next step? And then I was like, well, wouldn't there also be others going through that too? And then I was like, oh, well. Ah, I see. Okay, okay, okay. I I was just curious as to what that would be like two different entities of that caliber interacting with each other. In this sense, when we create AI... Um, they would be the, the ultimate, the ultimate knowledgeable, highest intelligent being that we can, uh, communicate with, like in this physical realm, at least. Mm -hmm. And then that would, that would tell us knowledge about in much more better words and more detail of what I'm trying to say, probably. Or in probably in a much simpler... What? I'm I'm fine. I'm following along pretty good. Okay. I'm actually going to use this moment here. i got to break away and go to bed. Oh, okay. Because I'm very tired. Fair enough. It is like 12, 1230. But, yeah, I don't know. I thought this is pretty interesting. Yeah, this is this is my entire experience from Brendan's house. It's just making the spreadsheet. And just de- just receiving all this this all this information and breaking it down and compressing it into words onto its yeah, on, onto like, a spreadsheet. It's kind of crazy to me. It's just like you get this from like trips. Yeah, like I got this from an LSD and nitrous trip. Not together, but Nitrous oxide after the LSD trip. It's uh, it's fascinating. Oh yeah, like I, I, I almost guarantee anyone who has anyone who has experience with multiple or many of the things here will understand. Um, so O two, oxygen. That's what we normally operate under the frequency of oxygen which is the, the the biosphere and psilocybin has been around for hundreds of thousands of years we've been eating it since we've started grazing the grasslands um that's what connected us to back to uh, like straight to the earth mentally or spiritually and then above that is all the patterns that make up what we what we see and all the patterns which would be the spirits or the ancestors genetic codes fre- frequent or um codes through frequencies or whatever and then universe that uh spawn the fractalization of the networks and fractals that make up the spirit realm and the and the codes of the ancestors and then the duality between the singularity and the null void that created the dual, the dualistic view of the universe. And then DMT is how DMT I can definitely say is how you access the spirit realm or the realm of the ancestors or realm of patterns or whatever. LSD is definitely you re, you looking and reflecting on upon yourself for sure. Nitrous. It's the only addicting one here because the singularity wants to be itself for forever. It's a singularity, but it can't because death and the null void is a thing, but doesn't technically exist. And then 5 of EO DMT is you as the singularity looking upon and experiencing the void. And this is the only one I haven't done, but I am fairly certain on this one especially with what other people have told me
then I have all these time notes and time wave zero stuff down here. Alright. Did you have to go? Oh wait, did he already leave? Yeah, I think he oh, left. I didn't notice. <laughs> wow. Hmm. Well, I was recording that whole thing. Just so I can get a video recording of me this, trying to describe this. Because I don't know what else to do with this information, but try to spread it. Because it just was downloaded into my mind. It would be a really good one to do a video on. Yes, definitely. Like, I'm, I'm going to upload this as a, as a podcast between you, me, and him. Is like I've the only thing I've ever experienced is pot, but I've I've done a lot of like I I don't I don't know what you're, you're okay. There. You're in Canada, you can you can get like any psychedelic really easily there. It's just online. You can just order it. But um, when I was I I don't know if I ever told you about my experience there. Where in my past relationship, but it was. It left me with the PTSD and, like I said earlier, about the whole uh, dissociation. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the time I was just kind of stuck in my own mind thinking of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, like, I, I really like these concepts of it's altering of perception it's... because I've definitely felt that, maybe not through psychedelic it's all but, psychedelics do is show you what your mind can already do mm -hmm. that's all they do it's like i did a lot of i had disassociated a lot i had lots of um gaps of time form mm. yeah that gaps of time uh i don't i don't think in this sense and what and, yeah, it doesn't really apply to this. Yeah, more it's like it's, there's no such thing. Like time, is just waves of events. I, I guess it would be more. It it would almost be representative of like null void, where there is no reference, yeah. there is no nothing. It would. It's just lack of. Mm -hmm. Like everyone has experienced at least one of these states, whether it be through drugs or through a life event. And that's why I and really, if and if you're having like, an idea of this whole like time through perceived reality, I guess it'd be called. My what? Like time through differently perceived realities, because I guess everybody lives their own reality. So yeah. Whatever you're experiencing is what your time is. Yeah. Whatever you experience is true. It is. It is real if you experience it. And we try and map it out using like yeah we try to we try to divide it we try to draw boundaries we try to make it into all these different things and we then we forget that it's all just one thing yeah i guess it would just be we we lay the real our perceived time on top of this like i guess it would be we don't have perfect like time whatever like yeah time block. But time for us can go faster off. shorter it can it can cross over i've had i've had many times where it i swear to god something happened before something else but everyone else says it was the other way around mm -hmm. it's like when a buddy at work tells you like wow that really flew by but for you it took forever oh yeah yeah each one of these lightning really bolt like strips is is a lot is a path through time that a consciousness can take or explore you can explore it whenever you want um you can explore all of this any part of it through meditation through psychedelics through these things but you have to become you have to like know what to look for and how to navigate first And it's what people have been doing since people have been doing. Yeah. 
Yeah, just infinite versions of itself. Yeah, I was always really into like, I I I remember. So oh, I just realized. So. Thirteen when I watched the Stephen Hawking thing. Oh okay. Like I've always loved looking at time and different viewpoints. Yes, definitely. Like time has always been one of my big things, and speaking on these synchronicities. Which the only other person I ever told was Kenny earlier, because I am very baffled and confused by it myself. Um, Terrence McKenna didn't, uh, he didn't like the idea of reincarnation. Um, he's seen reincarnation as just one time wave ending at someone's life, and that starting another time wave that... Um, from from that time wave converging. It's the same time wave, it's just another person. Mm -hmm. Through time, if that makes sense. And I'm gonna go take a piss, because I really gotta go. Alright, I have his returned. Alright, uh, what was I saying? Um... Uh I can, I can definitely see what you were saying there about how that could very well be similar to reincarnation. Yes, it can it can be what it's I it's what I believe people have recognized as reincarnation in the past when they like I guess they would repeat the same pattern of their previous life if you want to call it the same or a same pattern. Yeah, the same pattern, the same spirit. That's what a spirit is. I just, I just realized that a, a spirit is a pattern. It's what, um, that's that's all it is. It's a pattern that makes that allows us to perceive something from it. Mm -hmm. Like when I like on one of my mushroom trips, I was outside, and every single thing I was looking at was a, was like alive. It was, it had eyes it was looking around every everything the grass the trees everything was just alive as much as i am and i real and now i realize that's because the same patterns that form me are the same patterns that form nature because i am nature i guess, I guess it just kind of like the the way i see it it sounds like it altered your perception to perceive them as you would yourself kind of really yeah that's that's one way to look at it yeah it. yeah because i guess the human mind perceives you know like things as similar as they are to us that's what we perceive as like mm -hmm. you know we perceive other humans we are humans, but we don't perceive oh, animals another like another synchronicity another synchronicity event with the end of 2020 the the total mass of objects and things that we've created including trash roads buildings um everything that humans have ever produced the total weight of it that is still existing on this earth surpassed the total biomass of earth mm. that was another synchronicity at the end of 2020 which is a scary thought in and of itself yeah because now we've become bigger than our creator So, <laughs> what now? I mean, physically bigger, at least. Yeah. Like, that's pretty crazy. Um, what else was I saying? Oh, I also thought, I also found this connection, which is, like a really dumb one, but also a pretty interesting one to see. So if you look on the Mandelbrot set here, do you see? Yes. So that's an ass crack right there. <laughs> this the tip is the penis. And if you go in, the tip always goes inside the fucking ass crack. Of course. To create it, it to create itself. And that's what we do. That's what humans do to create more of itself. Yeah, we put penis in ass. Yeah. 
<laughs> yes. That's, that's, how, that's how breeding works. And just one of the many fractalized ways to perceive it is what we have described it through science. And there's also this thing that I like uh, about this website uh, where you it shows you the Julius set too. So there's the Mandelbrot set and the corresponding Julius set. Um, so as you see, if I put the my mouse at the very center at zero zero, you get a black hole. A literal black hole. That's where this that's the center of the metaphysical structure of the singularity. And when you start going around, it starts morphing, breaking, uh, fractalizing itself. Uh, I might be able to zoom in. Oh yeah, over here. If I go, it just fractalizes. And this is how we, th this is how we think time always happens is going straight like this into until we think that we're just gonna go into nothing and die and destroy ourselves, which is what's, sh what's shown here, which is the duality of it. Hmm. And then, but when, when all we have to do is start exploring up here and start exploring I over here. Why they say that, um, what was it? What was it? That the fourth dimension would be the dimension that perceives time because we can't see the full form of it. We yeah. Can only see, like, you can only see like you can only That's what time is for. It's that's why time exists is to it's so the singularity can perceive itself because it can't because it's just what a one dimensional point. Um, do you know the one video? Uh, I can't remember what he was explaining, but he did it in a sense of he did the whole flat world thing where he had uh oh yeah a two-dimensional world and we're three-dimensional gods over being able to see everything inside of it but they can't yeah. see us and then as he moves it through you see the different planes yeah. that's what that's what that existence is of time yes and that's exactly why we see it as linear as opposed to a fully what would be 4d object to us exactly like like an another thing to notice is that things only like let's if you if you're a collector of, of fragile things let's say you're a butterfly a butterfly collector like terence mckenna uh, was when he was younger he he wanted to preserve them because they were novel objects they were they, they were they were conscious entities in themselves they were they were novelty and he, he wanted to preserve them but his his daughter uh, later found his butterf his butterfly collection um, after his death and noticed how things only break down and yeah things only break down and get decomposed and fall apart things things disintegrate when they're observed because the butterflies were dried up and they would crumble if you move them just the tiniest bit most fragile things it's, it's kind of like the schrodinger dust. effect yeah it is it's the same exact thing just at different scales mm-hmm like how people, how, like how they recently discovered how two people in a at a crime scene could will will have two completely different answers, but they both experienced the true story. And it, one, there was it, it was an example not about crime scene, but I think it was about um, I I think it was. A comparison of how we can't ever have unbiased un, uh, news is because of past whatever you experienced in that uh, that brought it up until that moment will change your perception on what was going on. Yes, that's also true. That is very true. 
or at least that crime scene thing reminded me of that yeah. because of like you know one person in the room maybe they've gone through hardship so they see things more in a negative mindset or one person's having a really good day so they see things more in a yeah whatever mindset that until you observe through the same lens then even the same event can have different meaning to different people yes very much so very very much I find it interesting how even the the trail offs do form their own. Because like you zoomed in on like what would it like on a little bolt oh, yeah. off to the side. Yeah, it's just it's it's self repeating. Like every one of these is its is its own singularity. And the relationship between the distance from this point to this point and the distance from this point to this point is the golden ratio. Mm -hmm. that is that even if things diverge heavily they're always going to converge into a singularity not i wouldn't say or yeah not really because i'll it. find i'll see if i can find one actually i don't think i'll be able to find one on this branch or maybe yeah is it this one it's just a self-repeating pattern or if you want to get with what I I have experienced before, if you go here into the ass crack, it's just a time loop of the same exact complex events happening. Okay. So if you zoom in, oh, this is really complex and trippy. So you look at that, a galaxy. Another singularity. I love how it still repeats the same thing, just in a different orientation. Yeah. It's 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 every it's itself and every in every possible form of itself. And I can change the colors. You can see how these these repeating similar patterns start forming and they look like patterns and forms you would see in nature. Which I guess would make sense if you think about biochemical as a alphanumeric. Yeah. I can't zoom in any farther than that. Dude, I guess that would be like the mathematical way of figuring out how nature formed. Yes. But. Uh, uh, like if you were to think of like, l let's say. Uh, like a shell, you know, it starts off with the initial coating and then through mm -hmm. the deviate, like whatever pattern goes out. That's what forms the, uh, oh, the well, ring effect. This is literally the same structure as as uh, two black holes orbiting each other to collide. Like oh yeah, and then the center would be like overlap. Yeah, the center would be where it started yeah. to form the new singularity. Like even visually, I seen a video. Uh, and like the it's gravitational waves somewhere. I'm gonna figure these out. Yeah. Uh it really makes me excited for um, quantum computing. Oh yeah. You know, to a point when we can calculate, like being able to see, gather the like information that's... of like, 
let's say, two black holes and being able to predict what's going to happen, basically. Mm. Black hole. Universe. Are yeah, that's, to see it? that's the same. Like, if that's a singularity, that's a singularity. That's the, that's the structure of the gravitational waves in relation to everything else around it, at least. It's just the same pattern as everywhere else. It's over here. See, it's like, it's like an infinite, like, explorative thing. Like, no matter where you try to navigate, you just get to the same thing. So, this would be what's the, what would be known as a thought loop when you're tripping. You're trying to get somewhere else, but everywhere, every time you try to go somewhere, it's the same thing over and over again. And that can be scary for some people, but it only does it at, at high doses. And I guess even just realizing like, it would be part of the loop itself. Yeah, like, like oh wait, I'm in a thought loop. Oh, I had that one thing that one time. Oh, wait a second. I'm in a thought loop. And I, oh, I had that one thing. Like, something like that. Yeah. Like, I, I was I was in a thought loop one time on my biggest dose of mushrooms yet. And I was messaging Brendan. And I was just repeating the same four or five phrases over and over. And I did that, like, 20, 30 times. But to me, I, was, I only did it. I did it. I didn't feel like, I knew I didn't do it once. I knew I was in the thought loop of doing it. But being in that thought loop of doing it felt just so calming. Like, oh, this is all there is to do. Just do this. Ah, okay, I just need to do this again. Okay. And I guess it wouldn't end until outside. It wouldn't. Intervention changed the parameters. Yeah, it, w it wouldn't end until, uh, like, I don't. Like, yeah, this is, like, you could just be going down this, like, it, and it, it could feel like an eternity, because going down that to the end is eternity, but this would be like a, it seems like it, this could be represented as the singularity point where the, where the singularity itself folds in, in on itself, and... I don't know. But there's something there that breaks it, I guess. Mathematically, at least. Or at least resets the pattern. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So if it, if it is, like, infinitely repeating itself, then the frequency resets to that frequency of it repeating itself and everything comes back from that frequency. So, in the, in, hold on. So, let's say... Like, the, the loop would be, I guess, technically, in a sense, if you were to constantly be repeating the loop, you'd be trailing the outside rim of that diagram. Because there would always okay. be so something what to this is, it up and change it. What this is, mathematically, uh, the Mandelbrot set, it is an island with an infinite perimeter. So... Mm -hmm. The edge is anywhere where there is fractal, basically. So yes. Or I guess I wouldn't say the outside, outside edge, but that point where you get hit into the infinite, the, the perimeter of infinite loops. Yes, so here, here's probably another one right here. It's a spiraling thing, like like the galaxy. The galaxy is in an infinite infinite loop of it spiraling itself. That's what this um, represents. Where was that? Um, it would be able to send me that site real quick. I wanna. Okay. Mandel. Good. I might fudge it up trying to. trying to navigate at first but 